Welcome into the Jamie Chadwell Show. Charleston Southern finishes perfect in FCS regular season play. The Bucks beat Liberty to win the Big South title outright, and they'll take on Alabama this week before heading in to the FCS playoffs and coach a 31-24 win over Liberty and had to be a pretty special, enjoyable Saturday night for you. It was. Uh, it was uh, it was a hard-fought game, but I thought our guys Hamp, that responded to some of that adversity we created out ourselves there in the first half and came out with a big win. And We didn't want to share it by any means. Uh, nothing wrong with sharing, but uh, you'd like to have things on your own. And to be able to get that done, first team in the Big South since 2011, that was important to us and to try to solidify a playoff seed. Um, that was huge, and so uh, just proud of our guys and their, and their commitment to each other all year long to get to this point. It was a special night for them. More football ahead, but to do what you guys did, go undefeated in FCS play, 6-0 in the conference, win a conference title outright for the first time in school history. You talk to the guys about how special that is. Uh, you know, I think we will in time. We obviously, we mentioned a little bit about it. Uh, you know, two weeks ago we talked about filling the box, and then this week is what, what did you want your ring to say? You know, what do you want it to say? Uh, and it was going to say something regardless, but they still get to write that, uh, write what it says. And I think they wanted to make sure uh, whatever goes on there, they want it to be the first time ever or, or the best ever. And um, our guys have accomplished that. And hopefully uh, we've got a lot of more things to put on that before we're done with this season. Hard fought game, as Coach said, 31-24, the final in favor of CSU as we move into some First half highlights, Bullet leads you out of the tunnel again. Bullet always does. He's been, uh, you know, he's been our good luck charm there, um, and uh, we're not going to change anything right now. Liberty got the football to open up. Both defenses got the opposing offense off the field quickly, and once again, your defense throughout the game really didn't give up much outside of a few big plays. Yeah, I thought, uh, thought we played pretty well, uh, obviously, early, and uh, made them work for everything that they had to get and, and back them up there and had a chance to uh, – you know, give us the ball in a good position. And I thought what we did uh, good as well is we covered pretty well, uh, but we got some pressure with four and, and frustrated them to where um, they couldn't just um, line up and, and do things they wanted to do. And then we get a big turnover right here. Liberty had a first down completion there, but uh, DJ Curl forces the fumble. Zane Cruz uh, recovers the fumble. And you guys get a short field, and Austin was able to make – some big plays in the passing game, Nathan Pereira and Kenny Dinkins in particular. Darius Hammond gets you going on this drive with a run. Yeah, big play. Uh, I thought Austin uh, you know, played well for the most part all game. We had a, had a couple mistakes that, that, were, that hurt us there in the first half. He was able to overcome, but he did a good job throwing the football. Uh, we got good field position here from the turnover and we were able to go down. And I thought what was big in the game is we got down here in the red zone and had a couple bad plays to put us behind the sticks, but we were able to overcome them on some third and longs, which were nice. 12-yard touchdown pass there to Kenny Dinkins, who's really come on for you guys here the last month of the year. A nice throw by Austin. Yeah, Austin really stayed in the pocket. We got nice uh, nice protection there, and he hung in, and that was a great throw. Dinkins had big game against Gardner-Webb, a couple of big plays against Coastal Carolina as well. Liberty gets the ball back offensively, and your defense gets them right off the field again. There's some pressure from Zane Cruz. Yeah, Zane, uh, it was a good hit. They tried a little speed option pass and, and had a great coverage, and, and Zane really punished the quarterback on that one. We get them in a nice third down, third and long, where we were able to uh, get a pass rush, but we dropped a lot of defenders back where there was nowhere to throw, and we get them off the field. Uh, and uh, this is the frustrating part right here. We, uh, we've got a chance to, we got a guy open, and Austin forces a pass, and the DB breaks on it and goes and scores. So you're you're up seven nothing. You got great field position. You've dominated the game the first parts the first part of it, and then you let them right back into it. And, and we talked about getting off to a fast start, and so that was disappointing. Pick six for Peters tied the game. Actually had the ball for over 11 and a half minutes in the first quarter, outgained him by 100 to be where you're at. A little bit concerning when you're controlling play like that. Yeah, it was disappointing because you'd really had moved up and down the field. You didn't on the first drive. You miss a third down that you you know you feel like you should have had, and then uh, you get then on that one you throw a bad pass, and then we're driving here again. You know, and we're inside the 30 yard line uh, to go down and and. Uh, answer and that was our, what we wanted to do hey we've been in a bad position we put ourselves in a bad position but let's go back and answer and do a good job so we get down here and uh, put ourselves in a position on first and goal to make some plays and then uh, we're at the four yard line and uh, you know we can't get in which is frustrating cs you're in a tie game here late in the first quarter as you said take it inside the five yard line you're going to end up going for it early in the fourth and liberty is able to come up with a stand yeah, I had a chance here. We, we just blow uh, two plays in a row where we blow an assignment where it allows a guy to run through the backfield 
Uh, if you watch those from the tight shot, we walk in on both of them if we don't blow that assignment. And, but that's what happens in big games, and so we're not able to get in. It's frustrating. We're about to get a safety right there. Um, but we were going to go for it regardless because we felt like, um, you know, if we don't get in, our defense has got an opportunity to keep them backed up and uh, had a chance to uh, almost really get a safety. And then we do a good job right here of knocking them out of bounds and get them in a, a third down. And we have a, uh, our punt team out there and Jared Scotland, who is our player of the game for our special teams, comes in there. This is a hold up, but he's doing what he's supposed to do, rushing the punter and gets a nice block on the kick and puts the ball in good field position for us. Jared Scott went able to partially block that punt out of the end zone, give you another short field and a, a chance to take the lead. Yeah, and then we get down, we're inside the 14 on first down, and then we go backwards. Uh, we, we lost on the first down, we lost eight yards in, uh, in, in three downs. Just to, uh, And Coach Chabell did a bad job of calling plays right there, put ourselves in a bad position. Uh, and so we needed to come out, come away with some points, and, and thankfully Tyler was able to knock it up in there. That wind, if you were at the game, the wind was a big factor in the game, and uh, fortunately we were able to get some points uh, off of that drive. And then right here is completely disappointing. This is a, uh, comp completely on us, the quarterback and the running back here. Um, the quarterback, uh, just a, a miss snap. We work that all the time, mesh drill. We work mesh all the time, and uh, frustrated not to be able just to hand the ball off right there. Put them in a good position to score. Liberty gets a short field. Malcolm Jackson, and for the most part, did a good job on Darren Peterson, knocks away the pass, but Woodrum takes it in from 13 yards out and gives Liberty a 14-10 lead in a game that you're really controlling, dominating at times statistically. Yeah, they didn't they didn't do anything all offense, all game long on offense, especially the first half, and they're up 14 to 10. Just uh, really ticked off at herself offensively for putting our, t our defense in those positions. Uh, and then that's not finishing. I mean, we got down here a couple times and um, – just didn't uh, do the things necessary to continue to drive and put the ball in the end zone when we needed to. Ben Robinson broke off a 50-yard run earlier in this drive, but again, you go backwards when you get close. Austin takes a loss there and end up having to settle for a field goal attempt. Yeah, just a bad loss there. Uh, misread and then uh, makes a bad play on it. And then go for the end zone there on third down and not able to complete it. Uh, they make a good play. And then uh, we pull a field goal here. The wind gets it a little bit and just, uh, just barely hook it. So they survive again there. and. Um, frustrating to first half. I mean, I don't know the statistics, but just if you're watching the game, you're just like, we're dominating this team. And uh, to be down four, uh, we were a little ticked off. But I think our guys had realized, you know, going in, man, we, we, we played awful and we're down four points. And it was all because of what we did. So um, we're, we were confident come out in the second half, we'd be able to come back and, and uh, win the football game. Not quite the same as the Citadel game, but maybe in some ways a similar feeling at halftime. Hey, very similar because uh, we, you know, when we played the Citadel, we gave them every opportunity to win the game and uh, and put ourselves in a bad position and was able to come back. And so, uh, same principle: two turnovers. One they return for a touchdown. Another one inside the 15-yard line, and they get points off of that. And we drove the football and uh, and got stopped at the goal line. Missed a field goal. Was down there again. So, um, but what? Nobody was upset. Just really more disappointed in the way we just executed there. So we felt like we've got to get a great drive coming out of the second half to let them know on the other sideline, hey, we're not messing around anymore. CSU down 14-10 at halftime, but able to come back and get the win. 31-24 the final, and we'll take a look how it got to that after this on the Jamie Chadwell Show. Welcome back on the Jamie Chadwell Show as we take a look at some second half highlights from the Bucks' win over Liberty on Saturday, which finished off a 6-0 Big South season. You mentioned down at the half and you come out and quickly take the lead here in the second. Yeah, big big uh, sequence in the game. We get a solid return here um, with the way the kick was and we knew we had to come out and, and score. And so we get a nice throw and catch off the, the first drive here and uh, Prayer gets actually drilled right here by that guy right there. Um, but we're out, we're down here in, in positive territory and uh, and then Austin comes back and we put a little play in at halftime to take advantage of something they were doing and, it, and our, our players actually did it. They said, hey coach, this will work. And it, boy, it did. So uh, it was good to see them communicate with us and throw it up there. And now, now we're right back in the lead three, four plays into the second half. 46-yard TD to Kenny Dinkins, his second touchdown of the day. And Liberty here is able to really put together their only sustained drive of the game. Yeah, I thought uh, they did a good job here. They came out and, and did a couple things that uh, gave us some issues and um, took advantage of some things that we were in and were able to get a sustained drive and answer right back to us. Josh Woodrum, the quarterback for Liberty Big South's 
all-time leading passer in terms of the yards, able to make a third down completion there, and then Liberty dials up a trick play to get in the end zone. Yeah, that's, this was, you know, good play, good play by them. They've been running some of it, and, and they got us on it. You know, I mean, um, our, our corner was in cover four and just came off of it, and thought we played them pretty well, but they, they hit us on it. And when, and when people have to revert to that, you know, you know you're doing a pretty good job with them. And so uh, we needed to come answer again. You guys were able to do that 15 play, 65 yard drive, a couple of third down conversions and a big fourth down here. Yeah, we, we knew we were going to go for it. Uh, we, we, we needed to score, so it was good to convert there and, uh, and then uh, went back and uh, put ourselves in some situations to make some plays. I thought, I thought we had a bad, did a bad job on first down and put ourselves in some bad situations on second down, but we were able to overcome it. And, uh, and I thought we were able to throw the ball and, and really run the ball well on this drive and put ourselves in a good situation. Colton Corm with a first down catch, Mike Holloway a first down run here on third down. Austin able to hook up with Nathan Pereira who had a big day. Yeah, I thought this was a huge, uh, huge conversion. It gets us down at the four yard line, and then we fumble. Just we just totally drop the ball, and then uh, and then we get a penalty. So we're on the four yard line, first and go, probably walking in, and then now we go third down and go on the 16 yard line. But uh, Austin makes a nice throw right here, and. Uh, Prater getting or Pereira getting in the end zone. Big play right there. Big conversion. Finishes off a 15 play touchdown drive, and Austin takes a bit of a hit there, but hangs in and makes a strong throw. Yeah, we missed a protection there, but he he hung in. Uh, one thing I'll give Austin, he is tough as nails uh, and uh, does a good job. Big big sack right there by Johnny Robinson um, to, to knock them, uh, put them in a bad situation there, on uh, and put them in second down long, and now we're in third long, about getting an interception, uh, and uh, we're able to really rush the quarterback right here and force him into a throw. And this is just a great hit by DJ Curl and our defense. This drive here was the, probably the most frustrating one uh, that we had. We run backwards here on first down, and then we put ourselves in a situation where we have a chance to make a makeable third down. We make most of it back right there. So we're in a third and three, and we feel like we have a great play call on to continue the drive. You know, I mean, we, you got the lead, you get them stopped. We do a good job, put ourselves in a situation to get the first down, and we uh, totally miss a block in the front and just disappointing when you have a team and you feel like you got them on the ropes and you mess up and you give them the ball back and especially going in the fourth quarter their kicker could kick it from Mars I mean he's got such a strong leg and uh, if he get if they get close you know he can put it through the upright. That's exactly what happens 49 yards out ties the game at 24 apiece and I mean look at that he about hit the scoreboard. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. Yeah so um, I mean it's a heck of a kick by him but they tied up and now we need to try to go uh, put a drive together. Just past the midway point of the fourth quarter Austin Brown finds a wide open Nathan Pereira Big South Offensive Player of the Week seven catches 128 yards Austin threw for 301 go to the ground here and be able to make enough big plays in the passing game most of the day. Yeah, we, I thought we threw the ball extremely well, and we put ourselves in good positions. We didn't run it uh, well like we're capable of. Here they totally bust a, bust a coverage. We got two guys open, and so that's a big play. We, uh, we drive down. We take the lead, so now you're up seven with about five minutes to go in the game, and hey, all right, defense, go get us a stop, uh, and then see if we can get the ball back and finish it. And to Liberty's credit, you know, they get a solid drive going. I think they got a, a pass interference or a face mask penalty to help them on this drive. And so we get them in second long, and what an unbelievable play by Anthony Ellis. He takes the defense or offensive lineman and just drives him back into the quarterback because they had a guy open, and that was a huge play right there. Anthony Ellis with the sack sets Liberty back into a third and 19, able to pick up a few yards here and make it a somewhat manageable fourth down, but you get a big stop on fourth and eight. Yeah, big play here. We get some. We bring pressure. Uh, we get after the quarterback, uh, and he has to throw it just a little bit early and 13's uh, not out of his break. And now we've got you know three something to go. We don't want to give them the ball back. So we've got to make plays uh, and not let them get the ball back. And here's a third down, big third down conversion. Great throw right there. Uh, we thought we got the first down. We got a little short and we have to go for it on fourth down. Uh, we made the decision we're going to go for it. We're not going to punt it. Uh, get the first down there and end the game. Uh, big way to end the game right there. You guys were able to run out the clock last year and you went at Liberty to do the same thing here. And, in a game where you had some frustration, certainly offensively had to feel good to be able to stay on the field. It was, you know, I thought I thought we really played pretty well the second half. We had the, the one drive I mentioned and another one where we drove, uh, had a couple first downs and didn't make a third down, but I thought we were uh, so much better executing wise in the second half. And that was a difference in the game. Our defense was solid, uh, you know, all game. We put them behind eight ball, but they played pretty well there uh, through the game. And, um, 
if we don't beat ourselves or give the opponents opportunity to beat us by giving them the ball, uh, you know, we're, we're a tough team. And um, it was good to not give them the ball back. Anytime you, the opposing team has to stop you and you're able, you're able to run the clock out, that's a great feeling. And um, that's, that's good to be able to do that and, and clinch the Big South that way and outright championship, uh, do it on our home field. That's only the fourth time in the history we've ever beat Liberty and obviously two times in a row. And so uh, I'm hoping that we're putting our best foot forward as, as the program that, uh, to let people know the Big South's going to run through Charleston, South Carolina, and that's what we want to happen. CSU finishes Big South place 6-0. and The Bucks beat Liberty 31-24, 9-1 now, and they take on Alabama to end the regular season. We'll talk about that after this on the Jamie Chadwell Show. Welcome back on the Jamie Chadwell Show. Charleston Southern will finish its regular season at an Alabama team ranked number three in the country in the FBS ranks. And if you're in a Gatorade bath in that one, that would really be pretty impressive. <laughs> that would. <laughs> Might get a Gatorade bath for that one being under 40 points. You don't know. But, uh, yeah, that would be. Uh, that'd, be uh, that'd be a monumental upset for sure. But, um, obviously, they're as good as, you know, advertised. Um, we're thankful for the opportunity to go down and, and play a team of their caliber and, and just to – uh, let our guys experience uh, what Alabama football is about. Uh, we're realistic about our expectations going down there. We'll go play at the very best that we're capable of and um, represent our school. And, and then no matter what happens, we'll get back on that bus, get back here, and get ready for the selection show on Sunday. Uh, and uh, we're looking forward to that. The question this week for Ash Chabwell is from a parent, not one of your parents. It's Dan Curl, DJ Curl's dad. He's got a lot of personality. It relates to Gatorade baths. He says, I don't know where he's getting this, that you have set an FBS and FCS record for most Gatorade baths in a single season. So he wants to know how that feels to hold that record and if you prepare by ditching your phone, not having it in your pocket before the game. Uh, knowing, uh, knowing Dan, he probably does know that's a record. He's probably, he's probably actually went back and counted every yeah. Gatorade bath. But I have got uh, several. Uh, we probably need to learn how to give some and when not to give some. But uh, I don't think you, you do prepare for it. Obviously, uh, I had an opportunity to sort of know uh, this one was coming. Uh, at Kennesaw, it was great because we had our cold weather on, nothing happened, it, it was fine. But when you don't have your cold weather or your rain weather gear on, um, you try to make sure you cover your pockets because you have notes in there and you try to have you watch, you try to cover your watch up because these things go out on you. Um, and, but I, t I will tell you this, Dan, uh, I never get tired of those. And so if we're gonna give them to us, we'll take them because that means we're winning a lot and we're winning some big games. Alabama's coach Nick Saban, he's won a couple of big games, I think. He's probably had some Gatorade baths, too. We figured we'd do a little side-by-side, -side, see what you think of this uh, little graphic we threw up here. A tail of the tape is what we go with. We won't ask you to fill in some of the blanks, but just kind of a, a little rundown there. I don't know if anything stands out in particular. Uh, the annual salary of mine might be point something of his. I don't know. Is there anything by point, uh, point, 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 point zero? Uh, national titles, we're working on that this year. Uh, NFL, not, not anytime soon that I'm aware of. Not played Auburn, but we have beat Citadel, and he's not, so obviously we wound up in there. Uh, meal plan, yeah, we got a meal plan. I'm sure he probably gets catered meals, but uh, I think my hair might be better than his at this point in the time. Of course, he is 64 years old, and so, uh, but uh, uh, that'll be a it'll be a nice opportunity to uh, visit with him before the game. Fried chicken Wednesday. We don't know if they have that in Tuscaloosa. Obviously, probably not, and that's that's important. So your team will obviously enjoy this experience this week. It's just this, you try to approach it the same as any other week, I guess, huh? You do. I mean, you're going to prepare like you will. You're not going to cut corners. You're going to do everything you can to uh, put your, give yourself a chance to win and, and compete uh, well. Uh, I mean, as I've stated, uh, realistically, they've got great players every position. And, uh, and so even if we're in the right play, it might not matter because they might just out you know, physical us and those things. But um, the excitement of preparing for them, being on TV, knowing that you're going against a team like that, you know, you guys, they'll remember that. I mean, uh, they'll remember the preparation, they'll remember running out of the tunnel, they'll remember being on that field, and that's something they'll be able to share with their grandkids and their children that, hey, I played against uh, or Coach Saban and, and all those things. So that, there's a lot of benefits from it, obviously, the check being one of them. There's some negatives by far, uh, but uh, we got to play it. So let's go, we'll go play it and do what we can, and then like I said, get back and get ourselves focused on uh, the next season. The Bucks meet Alabama, 4 o'clock Eastern kickoff on the SEC Network. And again, as Coach said, FCS playoff selection show Sunday morning. Bucks find out their playoff fate there. More football after this week. For Jamie Chadwell, my name is Kevin O'Rourke. Thanks for watching the Jamie Chadwell Show.